Yellowstone supervolcano is rattling. Swarms continue with earthquakes at Montana's Elkhorn Peak and Crow Peak volcanoes. They're around the city of Helena that has been rattling for quite a few weeks now. And uh, this is an inactive, these are inactive volcano mountain ranges with the highest point being Crow Peak at 9,414 feet right next to Elkhorn Peak, 9,381 feet. This range is surrounded by the cities of Helena, Montana City, Townsend, Whitehall, and Boulder, and is part of the Helena National Forest in Jefferson County. And we'll also take a look at what we see in the Sizemore Berkeley very nice map. We can see the details, the latest one of 2.9, uh, in the past day, 2.9, but we've had, of course, a quake swarm definitely all there. And uh, this was the past week that we had, of course, the 5.0, uh, no, 3.1, after the 5.0 downgraded to a 4.4 in the Yellowstone area, west of Yellowstone Lake. And unfortunately, USGS has not said anything concerning this in the, their latest Caldera Chronicles. I, for one, am very dismayed concerning that. We've also had, of course, quakes in the Yellowstone Lake area. Okay, here we are at Google Maps. We could take a look at a closer look at them all together. And this is a very nice uh, elevation of, they're about 9,500 feet. And uh, isn't that nice? That's a beautiful lake right there. This is Elkhorn Peak. And right next to it is Crow Peak. We've pinned right there. And this is just about the area that has all these earthquakes. Even though they're, they're inactive, the thing is that uh, we've seen an uptick in earthquakes and volcanic activity. That's expected in the uh, solar minimum that we're having. And let's pull out, and that's Helena that we saw there, and this is, of course, Yellowstone Lake. And it's about, uh, from what I remember, about 190 miles, let's see, 130 miles from north, from, uh, north of Yellowstone Lake, the caldera right there. And this is the area of the 5.0, downgraded to 4.4 with a swarm uh, the same hour of 3.4 and everything. Now we're going back to the, this is the Helena area that we have. This is the past week is the yellow. The blue is the past day. And um, let's go into that. You'll see that it's right in the area again, Helena. Okay, that's the peaks of Elkhorn and Crow. These are beautiful uh, national parks, Lewis and Clark National Parks. And uh, next to Missoula, Billings, Montana. And we don't have to go out that way. Okay, we know what's, what's there. Now, let's go back to our Sizemore Berkeley. And we have here the whole line of, there's the uh, Yellowstone National Park, the whole line, that fault line, of course, with all those volcanoes, is where we have our Yellowstone Lake, the super volcano. And of course, with these, this is the past hour, the past hour. Okay, past hour of Yellowstone. 1.5, and we have, uh, as you can see, these are the uh, re reported, the recorded are a lot more. And we can see that we have unrest in this area. And here as well, there's a swarm. Okay, all this, of course, is related to, and usually when you have the river at 2.4, that's not small, uh, when you have, wherever you have the rivers are basically uh, areas of fault lines. Wherever you have volcanic uh, 
peaks is where you have the areas of fault lines. And you can see that it goes all the way from north to south. Uh, to Utah. And Utah has, oh, we had a, this is the past hour, uh, a three magnitude on uh, the Juan de Fuca plate just off Eureka. And we remember Eureka is where we have our beautiful uh, Mount Shasta and Lassen Peak. Where are we? Are they here? They're here. That's Eureka right there. And we have Mount Shasta and Lassa Peak swarms as well. That's Eureka over there on the Juan de Fuca plate. Where are we? Can we see it? Um, no, wait a minute. No, no, no. I didn't mean to do that. Just a minute. You're too fast for me. Okay, that's Eureka over there anyway. Um, and not far, I think it's about uh, 200, 160 miles or something uh, from, okay, let's, uh, it's about 130 miles from uh, the volcanoes, it's, it's not very far, but uh, we see that we have, uh, still have activity I guess in a way it's good because you're getting all this released energy. But um, it's still there. And we have deformation, as we know, in Yellowstone. We have subsidence in the caldera. We have rising in the Norris geyser basin where we have the steamboat geyser. Plus we have the new thermal area, I think is where I've pinned it, just about there. Okay, uh, this is the new thermal area is right around here. New thermal area is right around here. And it's not very easy for them to get to, as they said, because of the fact that there's no roads around there. I would venture to say that after the snow melts and things clear up and it's easy for them to travel there, I'm sure they'll take a, a, a geologic field trip to have a hands-on experience as to what exactly is there, because they have a, a tree kill dying off there and uh, they found a new hot, hot area and they have to find out what is it. Is it geysers? Is it springs? Is it fumaroles? mud pots, what is it exactly? Um, now let's go back. Oops, sorry. Okay. Pan in again, get this out. So, okay, you have the uh, Idaho and Utah as well. We saw that this area here is volcanic fields. All these areas that we have, these quakes, are volcanic fields. I don't know, you know, the more you look at what what is going on, especially in the West, th all these areas are volcanic fields. Of course, you know, we have the uh, subduction zone here. And of course you have volcanoes and earthquakes, plus you have the Pacific Plate lodged underneath uh, Yellowstone and causing all this, and it's a hot, hot spot as well. Let's remember that they told us that Yellowstone is two and a half times bigger than what they thought it was originally. And it extends all the way down to Mexico. It's amazing. It's one of the hugest, uh, most active supervolcanoes on Earth. And contains over 60% of the world's geysers. So it, it extends all the way down to Mexico which means that it extends all the way down up to the Northern Territories of Canada. Can you imagine? All the way out to the Pacific Ocean, all the way up to the Great Lakes. Amazing. And this is a, a mantle plume there. It's a hot spot. There's a mantle plume extending right under Yellowstone. 
So this is the area of Montana that's been seeing all these quakes uh, lately. And uh, I guess it was an uptick about a month ago. And they're still going on. Now, the Elkhorn Mountains, mountain range in southwestern Montana, part of the Rocky Mountains, are roughly 300,000 acres in size. It's an inactive volcanic mountain range, with the highest point being Crow Peak, as we saw before. In relation to Yellowstone, it's not that far away. It's, uh, I think, about 100, 160. Yeah, not even, 130 miles, as you can see. It's pretty close. And um, this is the mountain range, as you can see. The whole thing is a mountain. Now, uh, the highest point, Crow Peak. Right next to it is Elkhorn Peak. They call it Elkhorn because there's a, obviously, uh, this is so beautiful. There are a lot of uh, lush rain and a lot of elk, and um, very diverse um, uh, diverse species of animals. The range is surrounded by the cities of Helena, Montana City, Townsend, Whitehall, Boulder, and is part of the Helena National Forest. And here we are, right around here. There it is. The rocks of Elkhorn, formed about 74 to 81 million years ago as a result of Farallon tectonic plate subduction beneath Western North America and allowing magma to rise to the surface. The Elkhorn Mountains volcanics are extrusive rocks related to the plutonic granites of the boulder batholith, volcanic floors, flows, lahars, and ash flows, falls from sources in the Elkhorn Mountains reach as far as uh, Show to Montana, but the thickest deposits lie within a radius of about 60 miles from the Elkhorns. The volcanics probably originated, originally covered an area about 10,000 square miles, and mineral deposits associated with the Elkhorn Mountain volcanics include those mined at Elkhorn, Montana, which is now a ghost town. And, of course, gold at the Golden Sunlight Mine near Whitehall, associated with the breccia pipes in the volcanics. The mountain range seen today is related to the regional structural uplift dated mostly to Oligocene time. The land, forest fire, okay, I'm so fortunate, um, and Elkhorn Mountain Volcanoes, that's a PDF. Um, there's a huge list of ranges in Monta mountain ranges in Montana. I, it's just too many to, for you. If you want to see, I'll, I'm going to leave a link below for you for this. And you can watch it if you want. Look into it. And that's where we have our activity. The subduction zone goes all the way there. That's today's 2.9. That's not little. This is 2.6. The other one says 2.9. What can I tell you? Why is that so? It says 2.9. I guess they downgraded that as well. What can I say? And this is, of course, Yellowstone right here. That was at 6.30. And this was at 3, the three hours later. OK, so I'll leave a link below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. 
and we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.